In the UFC, you'll find every fighter at each other's throats trying to get to the top. It's all so wholesome. But somehow, there is one fighter that through all the competition can't seem to get into a fight. Straight out of Chechnya, it's Hamzat Chemaev. The Chechen brawl is frustrated, not because of a bad payday or a pesky injury, but because he just can't seem to find a fight. Honestly, as the memes say, you know you're screwed if you see a kempt beard with a scarred lip, though I wouldn't recommend running. Well, if you want to be on the receiving end of a complete thrashing. Think I'm exaggerating? Fighter Kevin Holland would honestly disagree. Well, if he remembers any of what transpired at UFC 279. Roll the clip. Yikes. I'm the most dangerous guy here. I got a cover for everyone. I kill everybody. I love white boys. You know you're the real deal if you can make a UFC welterweight look like a rag doll. The man stands undefeated with 12 wins and a will to demolish anything that steps in his way. Even DC's afraid of the dude. We've done this the whole time. Anthony Johnson, everybody, I catch the wrist. It's just a wrist ride. Just a little background. Daniel Cormier is the man who has had a one-on-one -on -one rivalry against one of the scariest and most successful fighters the UFC has ever seen, John Bones Jones. Not to mention he's a former UFC light heavyweight and heavyweight champion, so you know he's seen some stuff. Well, now that he is in a more docile role as an analyst, he can truly go candid with what he really thinks of UFC fighters on his YouTube channel. We love you, DC. He even praised fellow commentator and podcaster Joe Rogan for confronting Chimaev in the post-match interview of Kevin Holland's mauling. Yes, still recovering from it. I was in a situation where I wanted to praise Hamzat because he just ragdolled Kevin Holland yep. in one of the most spectacular performances of the year. Some context. You know what makes Kevin's demolition worse? That he wasn't even meant to fight Chimaev in the first place. After missing weight before his potential bout against Nate Diaz, Chimaev really won the award for blooper of the year. Don't tell him I said that. And after his match against Kevin, Joe Rogan stood up to take one for the team and asked Chimaev the all-important question. What happened, bro? But make no mistake, Rogan has nothing but respect respect for the Chechen fighter. And why would he? This is the man who carried fighter Li Jinglang over to Dana White's corner only to trash talk. Oh my god. While Li was grappled shut like a deer in a bear trap by Kamzat, he was telling the president of the UFC why he is the king here and that he is going to hog the throne for a very long time. And that's not all. I am going to kill everybody, said Hamzat Shamaya politely. Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody, kill everybody. I'm the champ, I'm the king, get out of Honestly, I'm just wondering what Lee is going through being manhandled by Hamzat like that. My guess, the year of the boars came in a little too early. But he just kept adjusting, and he's going to be relentless like that until he gets to finish. That's what makes Hamzat so dangerous to squeeze, too. Joe Rogan and Mike Tyson's podcast, Hot Boxing, dubbed him a psychopath. Listen, alligator, <laughs> no, no, that's not what happened. This is what they had in New York, right? Yes, in New yeah. York. Mm -mm. I don't blame him. There is something about a man who not only mauls his opponents and gets jiggy with it while doing it. Mind you, that's Gilbert Burns right there on the canvas, who's fifth in the official welterweight rankings. But all in all, guess Hamzad's little chit-chat with Dana mid-match really earned his respect. The UFC boss summed Shemaev up, saying that being in the fight business his entire life, he has never seen anyone like the Boars. And that is because of his attitude toward his opponents. He doesn't want to just win. He wants to butcher his opponents. And you know Dana knows a superstar when he sees one. Besides the authority, comes out really has got the attention of the best in the business. I had to pick one guy right now, and I mean, I don't know if you would consider him a huge star already, but he's the guy, Hamza Chumayev, you know? Hamza yeah. Chumayev is... But how many will actually be willing to step into the octagon with him? Well, Hamzat has thrown an open challenge to anyone who truly wants it. Now, if you didn't already know, boars in Chechen means wolf. And let there be no mistake, boars is indeed hungry. In his vlog channel, Hamzat laid out a blueprint for his future in the fight game. And boy, do we love his rants. In typical Hamzat fashion, he expressed his frustrations on fighters backing out and being all talk when it comes to actually inking out a contract. The weight class? Not a problem. 
problem. To him, it doesn't matter if it's at 170 or 185. Probably a pulse would suffice at this point, because Hamzat is aching. Apparently all four of the fighters swiped left of Shemaev when it came to actually making a fight official. See, Hamzat and I have a lot in common. Real men can take rejection. Please reply to my text, Stacy. Anyway, also, isn't it bizarre saying Hamzat and vlogger in the same sentence? Honestly, by this point, Hamzat has a better chance of fighting an influencer than he does a UFC fighter. I mean, a lot of people would pay some good money to see Jake Paul get ragdolled by Kevin. How to get involved, and a lot of people don't talk the talk or walk the walk, and especially, you know, athletes or celebrities. What makes Hamzat such a menace in the octagon? It's his style of fighting. He doesn't wait for the fight out, build a little tempo, and test the waters with his opponent. He likes to dive straight in and takes his victims into deep waters. It's kind of like watching National Geographic, except millions of people tune in to see the predatory display, like an anaconda wrapping around its prey. The more you struggle, the more you'll find yourself losing until you finally give out. It's unlike anything you've ever seen before. Closest I can put is, imagine coming Habib, and I'll give him a shot of adrenaline, like a rabid dog let loose of his leash. Kamzat will make sure there is nothing left of you once the referee calls the fight in. Being a grappler, his conditioning is unparalleled, and that comes as a result of his intense workout routine. Apparently, the Chechen trains four times a day. We're talking five five-minute rounds on the treadmill, where each round, Kamzat's coach, Andreas Michael, ups the incline, which is, mind you, higher than anyone else in the training group from the get-go. 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. It's a killer workout for a killer like himself. When asked who really inspired me to be like this, Hamzat replied by saying, drum roll, mm, me, mic drop. Hamzat said that he always acknowledged his talents and he didn't think any less of himself. He believed he had something to put out and make a better life for himself. Besides dishing out straight thrashings of his opponents, Hamzat can dish out a little philosophy too. During the number with ESPN, Shemayev has said, hit up some piano for this one, that if you want to get 100 kilometers in life, you can't simply get there if you stay thinking about how you're going to get there. Maybe you'll go halfway and die, but you can get there. Okay, Muhammad Ali, we see you. Honestly, see Seeing Shemaev talk all philosophical really makes you think. He is, after all, human. Which have you even more curious about who was Shemaev before he became the phenomenon he is right now? Well, Hamzat Shemaev was born in a small village in the Russian Republic of Chechnya. Befittingly enough, the warrior himself was born just months prior to the first Chechen war. I know, sounds like an origin story for a Mission Impossible antagonist, isn't it? Since Hamzat was a cub, he had that killer instinct in him. No, seriously. This one time, Hamzat came home with a black eye because some guys jumped him. His brother, Arter Shimaev, asked him, his little boars, why he'd let the robbers jump him. Hamzat started to cry, cue the awes, only to grab the nearest knife he found, shouting, I will kill them. And that was the true story of Hamzat Boars Shimaev. And you know the scariest part about him? That he's just getting started. See you in the next video. Yeah, of course, my first friends, I'm gonna go back home to my country, you know, Sweden and Chechnya, so visit my family and be with them.